Sitting next to me is what aims to be the smartest resin 3D printer that you'll ever have the chance to use. It's the Athena that's live over on Kickstarter, well, for the next 24 hours or so, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute, but it's an open source resin 3D printer that is completely upgradable from the inside and out. So that means you no longer have to buy the latest and greatest version of your favorite resin 3D printer. Instead, you'll be able to just upgrade the different components that go into this machine, as well as have upgrades and updates to the actual firmware that goes into these machines. Most of the other resin 3D printers that are on the market today never get updates to them, like ever, rarely ever. And while that sounds extremely exciting to me, I've spent more time troubleshooting with this 3D printer than I actually have 3D printing things over the very brief period of time that I've had access to printing lately. And this is not intended to be a review of the Athena 3D printer. This is just a prototype unit that was sent to me early to provide feedback and help show off some of the things that this could potentially do. And I have been providing a ton of feedback back to the Athena team. I'm also not being paid for this, and this is not intended to persuade you to back the campaign or dissuade you. I'm not quite sure what word I'm looking for there on the particular machine. I just wanna share some of the feedback that I've had and received that I've been sharing with them on the particular unit before the campaign ends. Also, so the printer itself was in FedEx limbo for a little while there until it arrived here in my hands last Friday where I got the chance to start working with it. So this is Tuesday that I'm recording this. So I've had just a handful of days to actually print with this over the weekend and just including yesterday and it's slightly this morning here before recording this video. And again, if you're not familiar with the Kickstarter campaign that's up and available right now that you'll find links to down below, but this is for an 8K resolution MSLA resin 3D printer that again is open source and designed to be completely upgradable has a build volume of 219 by 128 by 245 millimeters. That's a pretty decent mid-size build volume that you typically see somewhere similar to an Elegoo Saturn or some of the Anycubic Mono X type 3D printers that are out there. I should also mention that Vogue just posted a video that goes in depth and detailed about what the potential of this 3D printer could be once it's fully released and all the different functionality and smart tech that's gonna be packed into this 3D printer. And I would highly recommend digging into that because I'm not gonna go in too much on that since he's covered a lot of that. I really just wanna cover a lot of my experience and feedback that I have with the machine as well as showing off some of the 3D prints that I've had with the unit. But what really sets this apart from most of the other resin 3D printers that are out there is that it's, again, it has some intelligent features baked into this right here. So the big one that I think a lot of people are interested in is the force sensitive build plate. So there is sensors directly baked into the arm of the build plate that's gonna detect a lot of the pressure that's placed as well as when it's lifting up and the prints are peeling away from the build plate or your FEP sheet when using this particular 3D printer. That in itself should allow you to drastically start speeding up some of your 3D prints by dynamically increasing or decreasing the wait times when it comes to the peeling action and the lifting speeds of your particular 3D printers. Now, now you've also got some other functionality baked in here, like a, uh, a a heated sensor here that's gonna attach near the build plate and go into that. I, I, real quick on this particular thing here, they've already commented that they're redesigning this whole bit there, that how it feeds into it. Mine was held down by some like double-sided tape, which obviously I think they've said it's, it's, it's gonna be baked into the build plate or something along those lines, so you wouldn't have to worry about it just dangling and not sticking or adhering in there, as well as I noticed that when it lifts up after it's been sitting in the vat, resin can potentially drip back down that little sensor and into the build volume of the 3D printer. They're also using their own boards inside of the machine that also allow you to directly slice files on the 3D printer, which is what I've been primarily using to print with all my particular files. And again, I'll talk about that here in just a few minutes of why I'm doing that. But uh, the other bit is they're not using those Chitu boards. So a lot of the other printers that are out there are stuck with using Chitu systems and their boards for the machines. And there's been issues with locking down and file formatting and all this other and upgradability and all this other craziness. So they're just doing away with that and using their own tech for this, which again is all open source and fantastic to see. 
Now this also has built-in RGBs that you're apparently gonna be able to program and set up with different statuses of different colors that you'd want. I don't really see the use case too much in this. I guess it's a nice visual indicator. However, the problem is that I've seen, it's really hard to tell what the different color is when the UV panel is down because it's tinting it yellow. So it's if it's blue, you're seeing green in that case. But one of the coolest features of this 3D printer is, again, I can't believe this hasn't been implemented anywhere else, is just the build plate and how this is held down because it's just these little tabs that you don't have to actually fully remove the screen screws, which can be a huge pain point on some 3D printers. You just lift it up and lock it into place. It's just a really easy, intuitive way of managing the build plate, or excuse me, the vat in this 3D printer. We've also got two really beefy rails as well as a really thick Z-Rod there that's gonna help move this build plate up and down as well as just help you print fast and quickly there. I, I know one of the big things is speed with this as well and I am seeing some pretty quick prints off of this machine and really low exposure times, which is really cool to see. They're not using the new ACF film, which I know was a big question. I think that was popping up online. However, you should be able to install that on here. I don't know if they'll add that as an option later on, but you can always order those online and just install it inside the vat here for the printer and potentially even increase the print times even further with that new release film. Now again, one of the big standout features for this 3D printer is that sensor that's built into the arm there. So there's a little chip device micro sensor there board on top of the 3D printer build plate arm that is gonna be plugged into a power source with a USB-C cable. And then there are actual sensors that are wired in on the, uh, on the underside of the actual build plate arm. So as it's printing, and if I pr apply pressure down on the build plate, you can actually see it reacting to that or pressing up on the build plate from underneath, you can see that as well, which is again, just opening up the potential for lots of cool functionality to be baked in using this tech. And the all metal body of the printer is really heavy duty. And I do mean heavy. I think this thing weighs like 50 pounds. So a good bit heavier than your other mid-size resin 3D printers that are out there. And I believe they mentioned this is manufactured, just the, the, the body of this is manufactured by the same company like eMake that does the eMake 3D as well well as the EPAX printers because they're very similar in industrial and weight and all that other craziness that's involved here. However, they're the ones that are actually producing all of the internals that are going into these machines. Also, if you haven't already noticed, the acrylic panel isn't quite sitting and fitting right on this machine. It either got banged up during shipping. Again, this is just a prototype unit, so they're kind of hobbling things together to send over to me for me to actually check out. But this is where I wanted to actually start giving some of the feedback that I've had while working with the machine. And I've got a good bit of it, but I'll try and summarize as much of it as I can. So first, starting off is the touch screen of the printer could definitely use some work. It's it's honestly, it's very responsive on certain pages. And it, like the network setup page, you can see exactly how responsive it actually is when interfacing and typing in your password to your network. However, on a lot of the other screens, it just needs to be completely reworked in my opinion. Like I'll click on buttons and they just do not respond after multiple clicks, or there's a severe delay after clicking on something in some cases. I believe what the case is here is that they're using potentially a PNG image for the actual button. And instead of having like a square space where that button resides and you can click anywhere in that space, if I don't click exactly on the outline of the text in that particular button or the, the, the logo of the button that I'm pressing on, if I press somewhere in the negative space inside of that button area, it doesn't register it. So you have to be very precise where you're pressing on the screen for it to actually register. And as I mentioned, I've already conveyed like all of this feedback to Nico and the Athean team. I have been spending nonstop on Discord, messaging with Nico back and forth over the past handful of days of just working with this particular unit. So one thing that I really do like about this machine is the tank clean functionality. Not so much the interface for the tank clean. I think that could be further improved as again, there's a bit of a delay when you click on it and then there's no way for me to actually set how long I want the tank clean to be or to actually stop the tank clean process when it's actually running. However, once it's finished running, this is one of the easiest machines that I've seen to actually remove that cleaned piece of film from inside of the vat. Normally, 
you'll have to like put in supports and then lift it out with this. There's plenty of space inside of that vat for you to slide in the spatula and just lift off that cured piece of resin. One thing that just threw me for a loop is the whole move build plate functionality on here. Before you can do anything, you have to home the build plate which instead on like 99% of the other resin 3D printers out there, when you home, it lowers the build plate to the screen. So maybe you might wanna level the build plate or something like that. No, the home position is all the way up top. So you have to home before you can do anything. And in this menu, there's like a little slider bar there that you can slide on screen but it doesn't do anything. So uh, I don't know, remove that slider or make it, it like actually work so I can adjust the positioning. But once it actually moves to the top, what happened to me was I ended up clicking the buttons because it's not responsive. There's no way to stop the movement as well once it started. So I went to the top, then went to the floor, went to all the way to the bottom, and then went to the, all the way to the top again because I was clicking these buttons versus actually waiting for it to finish its movement jobs. And since there is that force sensor built into to this at any point in time, there is a menu option that you can go into to see that live feedback option of the sensor in play. All right, so let's talk about printing files on this machine. Uh, they have mentioned that they're gonna be working with Lychee and I really hope that comes to fruition here with this machine because currently one of the most painful processes of this whole pro, like the whole thing, is just getting files sliced and printed for the machine. Uh, if you're familiar with the frozen transform and the plate system and the resin system for how that was all managed on that 3D printer, that's like identical with how this machine works here, which you don't see on any other machine. And I think it's because it's just painful to work with. It's, it's like a, it's a cool concept of having just an STL file on the printer that you can run off and print and then assign to a res resin profile so that you don't have to, let's say, slice a file at one exposure and then that didn't work. So you wanna re-slice the file at a different exposure. You can literally just have the file loaded on the machine and assign it to a different resin profile when you wanna print it. It's just a bit wonky with how it all works. Um, the actual printing from the machine itself or getting files to the machine has been interesting to say the least to use the Nano DLP site or slicer that they had. Uh, yeah, it, I, it, they have files for, I'm on a Mac. So they have files for the, I'm, I'm on an M1 Mac Max. And this is the first time that I've ever, I think I've ever heard the fans kick on <laughs> My, my laptop here, or one of the few times where it was going up over like 800% for the CPU while trying to slice a file with the Nano D DLP slicer. I, again, I uh, Lychee would be the way to go. I think that's how a majority of people would wanna be able to do that. If you were gonna keep with the plates system here, uh, again, plates is very confusing. Maybe it's called print files, print jobs, whatever you wanna call it here, have co consistent naming convention across the different screens as well. I feel like I'm ranting and it's not a rant. It's again, I'm just expressing the feedback that I've had while working with this machine. And I want the best possible user experience for everyone else that ends up backing this and potentially picking up one of these machines for yourself. Because I think it's just gonna be fantastic machine but it's got a lot of like UI work that needs to be done. Uh, the workflow with slicing files needs to be ironed out and improved. Uh, I wasn't able to actually wirelessly send files from Nano DLP to the printer. I don't think I was able to actually wirelessly send through the browser as well. Uh, this is again, Wi-Fi connective. So you can go to the IP address of your printer. It'll take you to a website where uh, for this machine. So you can see it live printing. You can see all of your plates. You can set up your resin profiles directly from there. And again, that whole interface is interesting to say the least. It could definitely use a little rework. And I think they're already planning on reworking that some to a degree. Uh, but again, just the overall workflow of getting a file loaded on here was a bit interesting. So what I ended up doing was creating a profile for just the build volume of this printer in Cheetubox. Forget all the settings because that's managed on the printer. So I would create a, a build plate in Cheetubox. I'd then lay out and arrange my files, maybe pre-support them, then X export that as an STL file, then put that on the USB stick, load that on the printer, then go to select the file, wait a few seconds because it takes a bit for it to select or to show up. 
Then I can select the resin profile that I want to use. Then you got to wait again for a little bit because it's on board is going to try and slice this printer or the, this, the, it's on board is going to try and slice the files, but you can't hit print or send or whatever it says on screen there until all of the actual layers have loaded, which was one of the big issues that I think I had when trying to initially print with this is I just wasn't waiting the 30 seconds to a minute for the files to load for me to be, to start the print job. Again, it's just a, I think the workflow process needs to be improved or clarified or uh, just uh, to make it easier for anybody to come in here and work with this, especially coming from other resin 3D printers where they're very responsive to what you're clicking on and trying to print compared to what I've seen so far with this. All right, so let's actually talk about some of the printing experience that I've had with the machine and some of the issues that I ran into uh, with, again, the brief few days that I had with this. Initially, when I got the machine, got everything set up, went to start trying to print something, could not get the build plate to properly move at all, basically. And essentially, this USB-C cable looked like it was plugged in all the way, but wasn't, so I had to re-plug that in. And then I was able to move things around. Unfortunately, I kept running into <laughs> uh, failure after failure with the just a, the cones of calibration there. What ended up happening is I think we ended up just tweaking some of the settings, or maybe I ended up re-slicing that so that we were able to actually get those printed. I did end up getting a predefined profile. I told them I was going to be working with Soraya Tech Fast resin for everything that I was going to be printing. So they put in a profile directly into the printer for me to get started with, along with the cones of calibration. It just wasn't initially working properly. So after finally getting the cones of calibration prints printing, I decided let's go full send on this and print something. Let's maximize the, uh, at least some of the dimensions of the build volume of the build plate there. So I went off and printed a few files here, one from Wexter, which is the spider punk. Then I have a dead king or the King of the Dead, something like that from Photos Mint, Lord of the Rings files. I also have a 72 millimeter loot miniatures statue, as well as this little articulating frog that has a little booty to it. But these files ended up taking about three hours and 30 minutes or so to print. And I believe it was 2,067 layers that it ended up processing for the machine. Now, at first glance, I think these prints look pretty good. However, I am seeing a bunch of like little layer, I don't wanna call them layer shifts, but it's just like the uh, unstableness there. And I believe it's due to potentially these prints being further overexposed and the pressure coming from the build plate and the FEP sheet just causing those little ripples that we're seeing in some of the print areas of these particular files. I also don't believe that I had anti-aliasing enabled and I honestly don't remember seeing that as an option to enable or disable that. So maybe Nico can clarify. Uh, I believe they've said that anti-aliasing is an option. I just don't recall seeing it in anything that I've sliced or the resin profiles that I've set up. But on the frog here, you can definitely see some of the layer instances there of just how it was uh, building up the prints over layer over layer. I then went off and printed a set of the 32 millimeter scale miniatures from Loot Studios. These are all pre-supported and it was a one hour and 19 minute print and had 804 layers. And again, I believe it was sliced at a 1.6 exposure and at a 0.05 layer height. We then realized that there was an actual issue with the printer and the sensors. It looks like it ended up getting damaged during shipping because a few of the wires ended up getting ripped in half or just frayed severely there or maybe it was pinched with that particular printed part. I don't entirely know. I think maybe those uh, those wires could potentially be a slightly thicker set of wires to help prevent that. But what I ended up trying to do <laughs> was at this point, I, I was just going back and forth with Nico. I was gonna send the printer back and we were just gonna like leave it at this. But I ended up breaking out my soldering iron and retrying to solder some of the wires. Oh, and before I could even do that, we tried removing the sensors and I ended up stripping one of the bolts that hold the sensors in place because it was just like, it was completely locked in place. I was able to remove all the other bolts except for two, unfortunately. So I wasn't able to more easily solder that. So it's quite possibly the ugliest solder job that I've ever done or seen, but it actually worked, the force sensor. So I went back and reprinted those same sets of miniatures. I just used the creamy Sarai Tech Fast Resin. Uh, and before I did that, uh, I was running into issue after issue after issue again um, of just getting things to adhere to the build plate. So re-leveled the build plate, modified the exposures, modified the bottom exposures, uh, started to switch to different calibration print options, 
finally was able to get some things printing and then went off and reprinted those miniatures again. And with the, the like the sensors in play, I was printed the exact same miniatures and those printed in one hour and 18 minutes. And again, the 804 layers. So, so I was honestly expecting the miniatures that had the force sensing, dynamic force sensing there in play to print faster, obviously. I thought it would maybe auto calculate or recalculate versus just printing without those previously, but really didn't do anything other than saving a minute of print time. So I'm hoping maybe that can be further tweaked and improved, or maybe again, further things just need to be evaluated with the machine. By the way, this machine is going back to the Athena team so that they can take a look at it and try and figure out how to further revise this. Again, just a prototype machine here. So after seeing the success of those miniatures printing, I decided I wanna run off and print something larger overnight. So I found this Daredevil bust by Wicked that I printed as well as this little creature guy from Wexter. I also then needed to run off and print the base of this particular statue here. And one interesting thing about this, so I ended up printing this base just by itself and I positioned it to the far side of the build plate, knowing that there was an issue with the center and it was just lifting from the center there, whatever that issue was that I kept running into. So. What was interesting is when I ended up slicing this on the printer, it ended up repositioning this directly in the center of the build plate. So it kind of like ignored the bounding area of the print file, which was interesting. So I, I kind of thought it would stick to that, but I guess it just is gonna reposition wherever the file is in location to how it can fit on the build plate of the printer. So honestly, I think this printer has a ton, and I mean an absolute ton of potential behind it. I, I just, it needs a good bit more work before it's ready for prime time. And that's exactly what they sent it to me for is again, a lot of the feedback here on the uh, the machine itself, the, the touch screen, the slicing, the workflow, uh, as well as what I'm seeing with the prints here. And now with everything that I've had successfully print on the Athena, they do look good. There may not be the best looking resin three prints that I've ever had, but they are successful. And I think they are decent quality looking prints. There are again, some issues in particular areas with the prints. And I have to think again, it's due to the lifting and lowering of the build plate. Maybe some of the pressure that we're having there, or maybe just being overexposed. And I can't even believe that I'm able to achieve such low exposure settings with this printer as it is, and potentially could even push it even further with more tuning of those profiles. But if you're interested in more information about the Athena and the Kickstarter campaign, you'll definitely find links to those down below. I did want to also say a big thank you to Nico, who has just been a huge help in answering about a zillion of my questions and listening to all the feedback that I've been providing them with you know, hundreds and hundreds of Discord messages over the past handful of days. I'm gonna end up boxing this up here and mailing it back to them so that they can take a further look at it. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos like this one right here that's entirely too long. But if you're interested in my resin 3D printer settings, you can find links to those down below. Again, a big thank you to all of you that have stuck around to this point in this long rambling video of me talking about my experience with this Athena Kickstarter campaign 3D printer. Again, this is just a prototype, not a full on review of this 3D printer, but thank you again for hanging in here and watching this. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. I'll see you next time. All right, so here is a, uh, a bit of a raw video. Uh, I had the printer, I've got the Athena set up here. I finally, finally have it actually printing something that I've sliced myself and printing it. There's just, there's a lot that needs to be updated and improved on this, but it's printing. So I'm excited to see what the results are gonna look like here. Uh, Nico over on the Athena team has been working with me like all day and yesterday trying to sort out why we're having some issues getting this thing sliced and printing and just some of the wonkiness of the machine. There's definitely a lot of work that needs to go into the UI and the touchscreen interface of this machine. Uh, how you slice the files definitely needs to be improved. I know they're going to be working on working with Lychee to hopefully try and improve that. The current way of doing it is just uh, not intuitive or user-friendly or anything that I would ever want anyone to actually have to use. Uh, it's just very overly complex and uh, not super user-friendly. But I've got it printing. Um, this is hopefully gonna be a three and a half hour print. I was hoping to have this printed like way earlier in the day. So it's now midnight here. I don't think I'm gonna wait up all night for this to fully print. So 
Uh, I'll just have to try and get something printed in the morning. It's Saturday evening going into Sunday. I've got to get a video try and record it for you guys for this. Uh, and I wanted to get something actually printing besides just a cones of calibration, which I've only been able to get two of them printed. Um, yeah, so uh, here's where we're at. 